My name is Doran Schrantz, and I am the director of um, Isaiah and Faith in Minnesota, but I'm going to be talking about Faith in Minnesota tonight. Uh, I am so excited to be here. I feel like I am with friends and we are like, you know, I, there's nothing I like more than talking about states, organizing, local power building, whether it's in Florida or Michigan or Minnesota or wherever states is where um, power happens. It's the front line of the most significant fights that we are having in this country about whether or not we're going to be a multiracial democracy, and it's going to be won or lost in states. So I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so there is a lot going on in Minnesota, which I'm really excited to tell you about. It's pretty exciting and also fascinating. So what is happening in Minnesota? So these are a couple of headlines I want to share with you. One is a national headline, and it's apropos for your our, our case studies tonight, um, uh, which you're going to hear about Florida in a little bit. But there was a national headline. Uh, Minnesota's Governor Tim Walz is the anti-DeSantis. Dems should take note. And then the second headline was on the front page of the Star Tribune, which is Minnesota's most significant mainstream newspaper. And this was about eight weeks into the legislative session, maybe maybe six weeks. And the headline was Minnesota Democrats rapidly advance the most progressive agenda in a generation. So next slide. Um, so let me share with you a little bit what has passed and what is going to pass. Um, very shortly. So what has already passed and it actually pa actually was passed out of both houses, both the House and the Senate, and then signed into law within the first two months, first hundred days of this legislative session was restore the vote, 100% clean energy by 2030, driver's licenses for immigrants, universal school meals for all public school children, both at, for breakfast and for lunch, in both public schools and charter schools for every single child in the state of Minnesota, K through 12. And the PRO Act, establishing and enshrining reproductive justice and reproductive care into law. What is going to pass by the end of this session, uh, one of the most progressive paid family and medical leave bills uh, in the country, one of the most progressive uh, paid sick and safe time bills in the country, the Democracy for the People Act, which is automatic voter registration, pre-registration for 17 and 18 year olds, uh, uh, making it illegal to has, harass voters or election judges, um, money for community education and voter registration that goes directly to community organizations. We are, this is just one little snapshot, we are doubling the budget for childcare to 1.2 billion. We are establishing a new department um, for children and families, which will consolidate all programs um, from MFIP to child care to all youth programs into a new department. Um, we're going to put three to four billion new dollars into K through 12 public education. And there are real progressive revenue and tax spending proposals on the table while we have a $17.5 billion surplus. The other things I want to add about this before we go to that next slide is there's a, this is like the headlines, but there's a couple of, I want to give a couple of snapshots of the kinds of things that are moving through the legislature because there are democratic caucuses in both the house and the Senate that are clear about an agenda. We are going to remediate every lead pipe in the state of Minnesota for $800 million, every single one. There will never be a flint in Minnesota. We are transforming the housing agency so that it actually does down payment assistance. There is money for down payment assistance, including interest-free down payment assistance for um, those who are Muslim across the state. And those are things that when we started this legislative session and we were like going in, I'm just talking about the down payment assistance, interest-free down payment assistance for people who are East African and Muslim. Um, we went in the first day and the legislator who was going to author that said, you already won this bill. We're doing it. So the question becomes, why are the Democrats acting that way? Because for those of us who've been organizing <laughs> 20 or 30 years, that just because they win doesn't mean they act that way. So what has happened over the last 10 or 15 years that has produced 
a democratic democratic uh, elected officials caucus and our governor governor tim walls who have been this aligned on a bold clear governing agenda regardless of what many would tell them could be disastrous political consequences and i remember the last time we had a trifecta in 2013 the mantra of that trifecta was we can't overreach and we left many of these things that are passing right now they were left off the table and right now that's not the story no one has breathed a word about overreach so what's happened so what every uh what um you know we can go to the next slide everything is due before i go through this everything is due to an ecosystem so it is about 10 or 15 years of ongoing organizing and ecosystem building that has been about a whole family of organizations grassroots uh, grassroots organizing people playing different roles in the ecosystem from labor to faith to grassroots community organizations um but one of the things that i want to name here go back to the other let, go back one slide i'm going to i'm going to go there okay <laughs> But one of the things that has happened in the last seven or eight years that I want to specifically credit MVP and its theory of change. So one of the changes has been that grassroots community organizing organizations like mine have been able to build C4s and PACs and overt political power. And without the investment and the like, you know, leap of faith that Movement Voter Project made in groups like ours, building our, our C4, but also Unidos Minnesota, Land Stewardship Project, a whole host of organizations, building the kind of political power that is first and foremost rooted in not just winning an election, but advancing a governing agenda. So here's um, a little bit like the drunk history version of the past eight years, just to give you a snapshot of why this is so important. So in 2017, we launched our C4, Faith in Minnesota. Long time been organizing the state, but never had done overt political work. So we launched our C4, but with an agenda and a platform. And the whole thing was like, we have an agenda, we have a platform. This isn't about candidates. It's about our power and it's about politics to move our agenda. Uh, we did that in our six most important constituencies, went through a long process with them, East African, uh, Latino, uh, Kids Count on Us, which is our child care workers, Young Adult Coalition, Greater Minnesota, Rural Minnesota, built a platform. In 2018, there was an open seat for governor. We used that opportunity to organize. So what that looked like was sending 5,000 people with their platform along ourselves and along with some other organizations going into precinct caucuses and saying, we wanna shape whoever is the governor, we wanna shape their agenda. We emerged as a political force in the endorsement process, but again, around our agenda, which allowed us to build relationships with all the governor's candidates on the democratic side. And our, our mantra to them was, we need you to govern with an agenda that's as bold as the crisis in people's lives. Secondly, he won he won the governor's seat that year and then the and also the house uh won the majority. And there's two things that happened. Because we had political power, we worked with the house on building something called the Minnesota Values Project. This was a strategic inside outside formation that new legislators asked organizations like Faith in Minnesota, like Unidos, like Labor, like Take Action Minnesota to come together to say, we actually want this to be about an agenda. We don't wanna do what we did in the past. How do we organize year round together and move this platform through the legislature? So we practiced and rehearsed how to do that. So they passed actually in 2019, all the bills that we had on our platform and shared with other organizations. Then in 2020, we kept rehearsing this partially with MVP and also to keep showing ourselves as a reliable political actor, we ran the largest volunteer voter engagement program in the state that year. Um, and uh, the Dems then took the House, but the GOP kept the Senate. Then in 2021, 
um, we uh, again advanced that platform further. So then we added pieces to it. So our House Caucus basically already worked through, negotiated all these policy platforms, and we were right there. We didn't go away after the election. And what I mean by that is there was hundreds of people in legislative districts actually organizing with their legislators or preparing to flip a district. Then this is another major leap that MVP took with us. We launched Faith in Minnesota Action Pack in 2021. And that was so we could develop candidates for the state Senate alongside with them and with the party. So we aren't the party, but we built our own program and we coordinated directly with the party in 10 Senate districts. And that didn't look like just doing voter contacts, we brought all of our lists, all of our staff, everybody over. And a couple of highlights from that is the Senate candidates and the House candidates who partnered with Faith in Minnesota Action Pack outdid their colleagues on door knocking, on grassroots fundraising, and on all of their texting, all of their volunteer engagement. So we, those candidates that were with us and all of our leaders outperformed, and many of them won. And many of them were actually leaders from connected to us in our base. So now they're in the legislature. <laughs> so, so we go into this year where we have this trifecta. But what I want to be clear about, it's a one vote majority in this Minnesota State Senate. So everyone would predict that how can you with a one vote majority, everyone in the Minnesota State Senate is freaking Joe Manchin if they want to be. And yet somehow that Minnesota State Senate Caucus and the Minnesota uh, Legislative Caucus, they have House and Senate files one, two, three, four, five, six, set all the way through 20 that are complete companions and align with the Minnesota Values Project agenda. So the new and the people who founded MVP and who were a part of these political programs are now the majority leader of the House the majority leader of the Senate, the chair of the tax committee, the chair of ways and means. That's a little inside baseball, but these are the most powerful positions inside a state legislature, have been on this journey with us, with a set of organizations, hashing these things out, organizing between cycles. It is these things that have to be in place. Organizing between cycles, a whole ecosystem, a strategic inside outside formation, political power, not just doing politics, political power that accrues to community based organizations. They have to have political power in order to have governing power. So, the kind of journey that Faith in Minnesota has been on, many other organizations in Minnesota have been on. And it's the combination between organizations and constituencies, political power, direct candidate engagement, candidate pipelines, shaping and all built not just around winning an election, but about advancing a, a multiracial democratic governing agenda in the state of Minnesota. So there are, I can go to the next slide. So there are some lessons which absolutely are centered in the MVP like vision, but I just wanna name again, grassroots organizations have to have political power and in order for an organization to move to having some political power, it's gonna take multiple cycles. Mm -hmm. Grassroots organizations have to be about moving an agenda, not just um, an electoral outcome. It's essential that the political power that an organization builds, whether that's Wisconsin Citizen Action or Faith in Minnesota or Unidos or Florida Rising, that power has to accrue to that organization and not to a table or to a party or to a candidate. They have to have their own power. Deep partnerships with elected officials is essential to move an agenda. And they have to see those organizations in order to have that partnership, they have to see them as partners who have power. And lastly, I cannot underscore this like ecosystem question <laughs> about inside outside strategic formations. I knew it was important, but I didn't know how important until my experience, even in the last three, three months, moving this agenda in partnership with our allies in the state legislature. So I'll close there. Thank you so much to all of you. 
And thank you so much to MVP.